How do we explain such violence for that child in hospital? How can we look families in the eye and say Islamophobia isn't real? Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to a, a disappointing episode to be honest. I didn't really want to do this video but it's sad because when stuff like this happens to Muslims the mainstream media does not make it a big deal as they do when the perpetrators are Muslims. When the victims are Muslims the big deal is not as much but when the perpetrators are Muslims you'll see it all over the front page news. LBC will be discussing it, there'll be calls to reform the religion, you'll see all of this. However it then falls on our shoulders as the small content creators that we are to put this message out there. That's a gen, yeah. <laughs> Okay guys, so this Saturday in Canada, more specific in a place called London in Ont Ont Ontario, a white man ran over an entire family of Muslims and four died instantly, but one nine-year-old child survived. Yeah, and he's currently in hospital. Police, police have said that it was a planned attack. It was motivated by hate and the attack was quote because of their Muslim faith. Now this is not me saying it, this is not some Imam saying it, so some Muslim saying it. These are all quotes from the police. Now I think it goes without saying that this is an abhorrent, a disgusting, a malicious, a racist, Islamophobic attack. It goes without saying. Yeah, the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, kudos to him because he has used words like Islamophobia, it's unacceptable. How can we look families in the eye and say Islamophobia isn't real? When you listen to the black Muslim woman who constantly looks over her shoulder at the bus stop fearing someone will pull off her hijab or hurt her, she'll tell you Islamophobia exists. If you listen to the parents who begged their children not to wear traditional clothes for fear of them being harassed or attacked simply for what they're wearing, I'll tell you, racism exists. Muslim families have often felt uncertain or even fearful when they go out in the streets wearing traditional garb. The speech that, to be honest, they, they deserve and the reassurance rather that they deserve However, the media on the other side, or on the other hand, has not. We are seeing words like potential terrorism charges and possible terrorism because an attack that is conducted on Muslims just doesn't qualify in the whole terrorism realm, to be honest. Why, I hear you ask. I mean, you ask a 10 year old child this, yeah? You ask any reasonable individual, most people know. When these attacks are con that are conducted against Muslims, then unfortunately we don't qualify. Police has also confirmed that there was no connection between the killer and the killed, other than his hatred to Muslims. I have a few questions that I want to leave you guys with. Yeah, where did this hatred come from? We really need to think about this. It's not like, yep, it's that one person. We know not all. Muslims are the same, not all non-Muslims are the same. We do need to understand and we should reflect and be wise about these things, yeah? Where is this hatred stemming from? You can see even from the reporting that the reporting's not being done properly. What does that mean? It means the newspapers cannot be trusted. And this is something as a tarbiyah, when you are bringing your children up, you need to tell them how to decipher, and read and absorb the correct meaning from the newspapers. This is very important. I do have to give props of course once again to the leaders, whether it's the Premier of uh, Ontario, whether it's the Mayor, whether it's the Prime Minister, they've, they've condemned it and the communities are doing vigils and they are coming out in support of the Muslim community. But internationally, why is it? I mean I'm from the UK, why is it only BBC covered it? 
and not the other newspapers? Is it because it doesn't fulfill the criteria? Yeah, is it because it doesn't fair monger or scapegoat a community? Yeah, a minority here in the West, but a community to forward their own political agenda. It's definitely something that needs to be considered. And again, why is this selective outrage? Yeah, when it comes to certain issues, they get blown up and you now you must condemn and this and that. Now this perpetrator was a white man. I want to see the white people coming out and condemning this. Yeah, whether he's an atheist or Christians, you need to come out and condemn this. Because any time a Muslim perpetrates an attack, the communities come out without even being asked to come out. Yeah, but I, I, I don't see this. Last time when David Wood was eating the Quran and spitting it out and he had two ex-Muslims on the screen laughing and, and mocking with him, I didn't see the Christian community come out and uh, condemn his actions. The people in the higher echelons, yeah, or the higher echelons of the ex-Muslims. Why, why the double standards here? Yeah, and I think when things like this happen, especially of course what's going on in Palestine and well, what's, what's happening to human rights? Where's, where's human rights? Yeah, where's the talk of freedom of speech? Where's the talk of uh, abuse of power and state terrorism? Yeah, we really should take into consideration these case studies because when these sorts of labels and uh, like, oh, you guys are terrorists and you don't believe in freedom of speech and this and that gets thrown on us, we get all oh, worried. Oh, what do we say about this? Or what do we say about that? But these sorts of instances, I think they're very good to keep in the bank. Yeah, very good to keep in the bank because I don't know about you guys, but any discussion that I've had with people that are pro-Israel, you hear two things. Yeah, Hamas and it's our land is mentioned in the Bible. Yeah or in the Torah, the Old Testament, but there's no talks of, oh look, look at religion and look what's happening over there. You've got atheists like Bill Maher as well, defending this notion that, yep, it's, it's their land. Absolute nonsense. All right, guys, let's leave it there. Our prayers go out to the family. Really nice to see people uh, donating to the family. And there's so much care and consideration for that, for the nine-year-old child that has survived. I just imagine that child when he wakes up just to realize that his whole family has, has been killed. I have to ask about the young boy who is the sole survivor in this horrific attack, a nine-year-old boy who's lost his entire family. How is the community rallying around him? We are doing as much as we can to support him. The family has gathered. We are, um, he, he's in stable condition, thankfully, and we're doing as much as we can to um, gather information and um, uh, make, out, make an outline of what we're gonna do for him and who's gonna be there for him. And uh, thankfully, everyone has been taking a step forward and everyone wants to take care of him because at the end of the day, he's everyone's son now. He's everyone's son now. May Allah protect us and may Allah also give us the ability to realize that life is very short. Yeah, we don't know we could be walking and anything can happen. Yeah, and also bear in mind guys, the people that have died, they are Shaheed. Yeah, they are people that are in Jannah and the test now is for the rest of us. Yeah, so don't get angry, don't get frustrated and don't lose hope. Of course, we carry on doing what we can, but the results are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, yeah let's leave it there until next time. Assalamu alaikum.